The basis for our watercolor painting this month was downloaded at freedigitalphotos.net. It's a beautiful picture of a tree with fall colors and a receding fence line that's obscured by some fog. I'm laying this out using the grid system. So give yourself some halfway points and then some points in between those and you'll wind up with a grid that divides the picture into four to eight pieces per side. Once you have the grid constructed around your reference material, tape down a piece of watercolor paper of similar proportions and then use masking tape and give yourself another border. Then on the masking tape, measure off your same measurements that you had on the reference material. Then you're going to use that grid to lay out the painting. So the drawing process is the same as always, but these grids will help you to put it down right the first time. So the horizon line is a little bit underneath the B point, and then it goes up past the B point on this side. So I can sketch that in. The fence ends about right here, so that's a quarter of the distance between the half and the B. So I can mark that off here. You see you need to give yourself a vertical measurement and a horizontal measurement for where everything ends. So this is going to be on the horizon line, half and B. How high up does it go? About half or between B and half. Boink, boink. This is going to make more sense while you're doing it yourself as opposed to watching me do it or listening to me do it, which might get really confusing. Try it and you'll see how simple it is. So I'm going to take a little bit and do this off camera and then I'll come back to you. When your drawing is in place, then you need to start painting. When you watercolor paint, generally you paint from the back forward. So I'm going to start with the background elements and in this case that's the sky. I'm going to cover the entire thing, painting right over the tree with kind of an off color gradient that gets a little bit darker down here and is a little bit lighter up here. And we'll cover it right up to the horizon line that way. So I'm going to start by just spraying my paper a bit, smoothing that out with a nice big flat brush. I'm going to brush water past the line that I want it to go to because I don't want it to suddenly stop. This is a nice soft gradient. Then I'll mix up that soft yellowy creamy color and before I put it down on the paper I'm going to test it. So I have some squares here, my watercolor paper cut out with a hole in it. I'm going to test right next to it, put that up against the painting, make sure I have the right color before I commit to it in the painting. So it's darkest down here. I'm going to flip this upside down and paint at a tilt so that I'm painting the darkest area first and then it will lighten naturally with gravity as that water flows up. Up at the top here it's very light colored so I'm just going to switch to clean water and paint over anything that wasn't covered and I might do one more pass in the dark area something a little bit more intense You can see the effect that that has had when I flip it right side up. It's a nice even gradient. I'm not going to go back in and fiddle around with anything that I see as a flaw right now. I'm just going to let this dry at this point. After that first pass is dried, you can see it's nice and foggy for us. Next I'm going to add the fence posts. Now the important thing to remember here is that the reason you have a foggy effect is because of the tone on these fence posts. It's really light and it retreats more and more and gets even lighter in the background. So it's really important to exactly match the color of each fence post. And with that hole I can go right up to the color that I need and have a swatch right next to it. So I can see precisely what that color is going to look like on the page. That looks perfect. So when I have the color matched and I'm just going to drop it in. Using a flat makes that really easy work. Then I'm going to blot it a little bit 
and put in the second fence post and by blotting I'm lightening that color. I'll work until I have all of them in place and for the last couple it's very very light you almost can't see anything. And that same color is on the path so I just am using the same thing that I already have mixed up and then I'll carefully lay that path down back here it's really light and watered and then it gets a little bit stronger and has some more brown mixed in as we come to the foreground so I'll just mix in some more red tone here in the foreground and then I want the lines to be foggy and soft so I'm just going to wash up with some clean water and blend those edges away before they have a chance to dry then I'll let it dry again now even before this dries very much, you can start working the leaves of the trees. So here's my reference material. I'm going to match that yellow. That's good right there. And then to paint it, I'm going to spray the surface with the water from a spray bottle. And that will help me to have a natural leaf texture. So this is both controlled and loose because then when I add my paint, I get a nice uneven look from the water but it's still fairly tight and controlled. You have to work fairly quickly because if the water droplets dry you're not going to pick up that cool texture anymore. But work this way until your leaves are roughly in place then let it dry completely. Now the leaves are dry so I'm going to do some work on the trunk. So it's the same process get your swatch ready and then test some colors there we go once the color is ready I'm just going to use my flat brush and carefully lay that trunk shape in working around the leaves and following my pencil lines in some areas I'm going to paint around those leaf shapes so that it will look like the leaves are on top and there's no way to speed that up. You just have to go really slowly and carefully. Okay, so this is the way that I'm going to work filling in all of those trunk shapes that I see. Then I also want to do some work in this grass. If you want your painting to look like your reference material, then you have to match those colors. So use a swatch and match everything that you're putting down. Then I'm going to paint this green grassy shape I have my reference material right next to me and I'm painting what I see. Here's the large dark green. You can paint that in first and then wash a lot of the color out of my brush and retreat it back to this foggy area. And I see some similar green on this side of the road so I can wash that in the same way. It's the same green so I don't have to rematch. Then I'm going to do that same process and drop in these darker colors. And then I will carefully put them in. Instead of seeing individual grasses, I'm seeing it as a cluster of shape. When that darkest layer is all in, then I'm going to let it dry and I can wash over the top of it with a lighter color. So I'm going to go off camera now, let this dry and work up the rest of the tree. And then I'll come back to it and show you how to push forward to the end. Now I've added the rest of the trunk and this grass is nice and dry so I'm going to float in the rest of the color right down here. Add a few more details in the foreground and we'll be done. Match that foggy golden color in the background, right here. That's good. I'll wash an uneven line in the back and then wash right over the top. And I want to soften that upper line. Do that with some clean water. It's more interesting if there's a variation. So I'm not going to soften the entire thing. I'm just going to leave a couple of hard edges and wash the rest away. Then for that foreground, I'm going to protect the rest of the paper with a piece of scratch paper. And then I'm going to use a round brush 
and spatter in some of those darks. It doesn't take much. You see the spattering is not only faster than painting them individually, they also look more realistic. So now I'm going to let this dry. I'll make any final adjustments after my eyes have had a chance to rest away from it. And then I'll come back and show you the final finished piece. Okay, here's what I came up with. So here's the reference material. Here's the finished painting. So then there's nothing left to do but to remove the tape and to see how the painting would look matted or framed. So this is a nice simple little exercise. If you're just starting to paint, then I recommend starting with something like this. It's a simple, simple design. Take your time. It's not too complicated and you can wind up with a really nice piece. So that completes this month's tutorials. I hope that you've learned something that you can take back to your own studio. And I hope you'll join us again next month for another drawing and painting lesson. So thanks so much for watching.